having trouble passing in Madden 23, whether you're taking too many sacks, throwing too many interceptions, or just having a hard time trying to figure out the new passing system. What is that? If you want to learn the secret to having an explosive and consistent passing game in Madden 23, stick around after the intro. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. The most important thing is figuring out what type of passer you are. There's three different types of passing in this game between classic, placement, and placement and accuracy. Now, classic is fine if you're used to that. You can stick with that. I will go over some tips for classic in this video, but at the end of the day, we're gonna spend most of this time around placement and accuracy because this is the Woo! newest function to Madden 23, and if you master it, you're gonna have a lot of advantages that you won't have from classic mode. To change this, all you really have to do is go into your options at any point in time, whether in the game or whether in the main menu, go to settings, then hit game options, and you can see right here, we have the option to make a bunch of changes when it comes to our passing type. You'll Notice in Classic that all of these other options are grayed out, but that's because they don't really come into play. But once you switch over to Placement or Placement Accuracy, you'll see that you have options for a lot of different things. Passing slowdown only really works in offline gameplay, so I'm not going to go over that too much because it's not really helpful to people that play online. The most important things that you can adjust are going to be the Freeform Reticle Max Distance, which I typically recommend keeping at near, although there are a lot of people that swear doing it on far is better. I will go over that as well. And then the one that you're probably going to want to change the most or mess with the most is going to be freeform reticle speed which really can change based off of whether you like near far or even what quarterback you're using during gameplays so if you change your quarterback a lot you're going to want to change this a lot if you're using a quarterback like josh allen who has gunslinger and a much quicker release based off the fact that the ball gets there quicker you're going to probably want your reticle speed to be a little bit higher now if we pause this we see everything we need to know we have our meter which is right above the receiver's head we want to hold the button until it reaches the green it's really that simple the part that people have a lot of issues with i feel is the freeform reticle basically any time that you want to pass lead it's going to land with inside this bubble so if you wanted to pass lead to the left it's going to go to the left if you want to go to the right it's going to go to the right but it's always going to be inside of this circle the pass lead function by the way is hitting one of the receiver button icons while holding the left stick in whatever direction you want it to go the freeform reticle is how you leave that circle hitting the left trigger after throwing the ball allows you to place where the freeform reticle goes outside of the circle and that's very important when it comes to deep passing if you're throwing this ball inside of this circle your receiver will slow down to catch the ball with inside the circle. So if you're using the new freeform passing system, you really have to lead the ball outside of the circle and catch it there to make these explosive catch and run one play touchdowns. This works no matter who you're using a quarterback. This is not something I'm just getting because of Josh Allen. You can see here we're using James Winston, who's a much worse quarterback. Same thing. The ball placement is outside the reticle. We get a much smoother catch and run and an easy one play touchdown right up the middle of the cover four. Now, like I said, a lot of people think that using far is a better way to go. In my opinion, if you're going to use far you have to lower the freeform reticle speed you'll see here when i have it set to a 10 still you can see how errant this pass is based on the fact that the reticle is moving so quickly when it's set to near it's made to stay around the outside rim of the reticle to the point where it doesn't go too far so if you're going to use far you really want to lower this to something around like a one two maybe a three and then you'll see you can have the exact same effect everybody will figure out what they like the most if you do find that the ball is going too far away then it's always best to lower the reticle speed next up we'll go over pass protection and the pass rush in Madden 23 is designed in a way that it really is meant to prevent you from rolling out of the pocket. You can see on this play here, this defensive end is completely swallowed up by the tackle and the guard. The second I roll out, this defensive end magically breaks free and is racing me down immediately. This is by design. This is something that Madden 23 put into place because they know people are tired of playing running quarterbacks. In Madden 23, you really have to use your blockers in the pocket a lot like you do when you're running the football. You really have to be paying attention to the angles that the pass rushers are coming off the blocks. You can see here, if the blockers are going wide, I have to step up in the pocket. If they're all moving to the left, I have to move to the right. Treat the quarterback a lot like a running back. Now, there are some adjustments that you can make to improve your blocking, but the most important thing is probably to make sure that you always have a check down receiver. At any point in time, if the rush gets too heavy, you always want to make sure you have a drag, a zig, a slant, something like that. Any type of short outlet route that you can throw the ball to if the pressure gets too great. Just make sure you're not overusing this check down as your opponent will eventually key in on it, either with adjustments or just by using using the short routes. 
You also always have the option to throw the ball away simply by pushing in the right stick or the R3 button and throwing the ball out of bounds safely. In years past, you would get a penalty if you did it from inside the tackle box in the end zone, but in Madden 23, you don't even get a penalty for that anymore. You also always have the option to playmaker if no receiver in your area is open. Playmaking is simply controlling the closest receiver with the right stick. I find it's best typically to send the closest receiver up the field, but you can really send him in any direction. Next up, we'll go over blocking adjustments. You could always block your tight end or your running back. The tight end is probably the better of the two as far as how long they can hold the block just because they typically have higher pass blocker ratings. To block either of these players, you just have to use the hot route system, select the receiver as if you were going to put them on a route, and then just choose pass block, which is is usually the right trigger. If you block the tight end without sliding the protection, typically the tight end will be on an island in a one-on-one -on -one block that'll usually lose. So always make sure to slide your protection. You'll see on this next play, both the blocking tight end and the blocking running back will come into effect while the running back really just looks for whoever is the first person to get off of their block and then he comes over and cleans it up. But once again, the running back does not hold the block for very long. Running backs on play actions a lot of times still count as blockers, but if you forget to cancel the play action pre-snap by putting them on a pass block, a lot of times the play action play art will take the running back out of position and make them incapable of making a block as you can see this edge defender gets around so fast that the running back really has no chance and it's all because of the play action so if you forget to pass block your running back pre-snap you can always hit the right trigger which will cancel the play action and turn your running back into an immediate blocker making him a much better pass blocking option and last but not least if you're going against a dominant pass rushing force like an Aaron Donald or a JJ Watt simply them being close to your quarterback a lot of times can force incomplete passes under pressure throws so if you run into somebody like this you want to make sure that you take care of them by putting them on a double team block to do this you simply bring up your pass protection calls and hit down on the right stick then you simply have to choose which defensive lineman you want to be double teamed by hitting the left or right on the left stick until the icon for double team is over the defender you want to be double teamed then hit the a button to select them it's really that simple you'll notice on this next play both the right guard and the right tackle double team aaron donald shutting him down making sure that he has the least amount of opportunity to get through to the quarterback so now that we got our protection calls down the next most important thing is reading a defense i already made an entire breakdown on how to read a defense so i'll have a link in the description if you guys want to check that out quickest way to break this down though is very simple if your cornerbacks are five yards off the line of scrimmage or five yards off the receiver it's typically a cover two if they're eight yards off the receiver it's typically a cover three a cover four or a man coverage the easiest way to tell if it's a man coverage or a zone coverage is typically the alignment of the cornerbacks over the receiver if they're out wide of the receiver like this it's typically a zone if they're right in front of the receiver it's typically a man it's really that simple but if you want more information link in the description below on this next play since i read the fact that it was a cover two i knew that cover twos are weak right over the middle and we get a very easy touchdown right up the seam between the two safeties Next up, we're going to go over the importance of how to throw a pass. If you're throwing a pass off your back foot or on the run like this, you're not going to get very good accuracy. It doesn't matter what quarterback you're using. You want to set your feet before you throw. The easiest way to do that is basically letting go of the stick entirely and letting your quarterback gain his own natural posture. At that point, you can really bullet and pass lead in any direction and get a much better throw. On this next play here, I plan on throwing to the receiver on the left, the wire out. So I sidestep and throw into that. The sidestep really serves a dual purpose. Number one, I'm really just trying to get a good pass pass lead outside but number two I really want to get as much power into that throw as possible and doing that really helps in both scenarios. I also made a bullet pass. To me, bullet passing is the most important type of pass that you can make. You pretty much get a bullet pass 90% of the games, especially against zone coverages when you're trying to fit it in between small windows. When it comes to lob passes, that's typically going to be used against man coverage when there's no safeties over the top. Next up, we'll go over the types of catches that you can make. There's really three types of catches. You can argue which one's the most dominant this year. To me, possession catching or aggressive catching is probably the most dominant. You can see here, as long as you go up and high point a ball, a lot of times on offense, you'll come down with it. To do that, all you have to do is hit wire triangle. It's very simple. One of the best options as well is safe catching. Anytime you're throwing the ball into a tight window with defenders around them, you're going to want to hit the A or X button with an Xbox or PlayStation to catch the ball and go straight to the ground, making it more likely for them to keep the ball than rather than the ball getting knocked out. And last but not least, we have rack catching. Rack catching is really meant for deep explosive pass plays if you want to catch and run or even short pass plays where you want to catch and turn up the field for a big catch and run. All you have to do is hit the square or the X button to do this and you'll turn small plays into big plays. 
And then last but not least, for people that are still using classic passing mode, I'm gonna go over a few things that really are made just for classic passing. Now, when it comes to a low throw, this is something that got significantly nerfed and it's ultimately been replaced with the control for the freeform reticle. But if you're still using classic mode, you can still do a low throw and it still can be effective. If you do a low throw, all you're doing is holding the left trigger or the L2 button and it'll basically throw the ball right to the ground. Now, the accuracy of this has really been altered, but it's only been altered if you use it with the pass lead function at the same time if you just simply do a low throw a lot of times you'll still get that type of animation that's pretty accurate when it comes to high throws i feel like the high throw is actually pretty good this year because the aggressive catch is so overpowered if you do a high throw and there's a defender right in the area you can see how consistent it is as i'm constantly completing these aggressive catches to do a high throw all you have to do is hit the rb or the r1 button on xbox or playstation and you'll see that the ball will be up in the air to the point where it's going right to the receiver's hands so that's that's the video if you guys want to see more videos like this, do me a favor, be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. I'm going to have another video popping up on a similar topic if you guys want to check that out. I'm sure it'll help out your game as well. And other than that, thanks for watching, man. Money shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.